Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I'll be sharing with you a market update. So we'll first take a look at the market breath, followed by some of the price action of the indexes, and then some of my watch list for this coming week. Right, so we'll begin with the market breath. So over here, we have the New York Stock Exchange. And as you can see, the market breath has been slowly improving in the past two to three weeks. Right, so over here, we have the chart of the percentage of stocks above their 50-day moving average. So over here, we see that in the past two to three weeks, the percentage of stocks above their 50-day moving average has been slow, slowly and steadily increasing. Right, so over here, um, three weeks ago, we had um, the percentage of stocks above their 50-day moving average around 40%. And then you can see as for, of last week, the percentage of stocks above their 50-day moving average is up to six more than 60%, right? So that's a good um, improvement in the breath. And then over here, we also see that the percentage of stocks above their 200 day moving average has been increasing generally, right? So over here, we had an uh, increase a bit, then it declined. Then you can see in the past two to three weeks, it has been increasing, right? So from a low of around 40%, now it's almost 60%. And then over here, we have the new high, new lows, right? So this has also been steadily improving in the past two to three weeks, right? So you can see like um, as recently as three weeks ago, the new high, new lows was in negative territory, right? So, but right now and for the previous week, it has been in positive territory. So, over, so overall, across the New York Stock Exchange, the breath has been improving. So, that's something we would like to see on top of positive price action, right? So, the market breath tells us that, okay, like it's more and more stocks are participating in this rally, which give this rally more legs in the future. So um, on top of just price action, we always want to take a look at the market breath confirming the rally. So if the market breath is confirming the rally, then the rally is more sustainable in the long run, right? So that's for the New York Stock Exchange. Then now let's take a look at the NASDAQ, right? So the NASDAQ, similar case. So then this is the number of stocks above their 50-day moving average. So over here, you see that this number has been increasing has been increasing in the past few weeks, right? Then this is also the number of stocks above the 200 day moving average also increasing. And then for new high, new lows, the NASDAQ has also been experiencing a positive number in the past few weeks, right? So as recently as about five weeks ago, it was in negative territory, but then now, right now, it's clearly in positive territory. So same thing goes with the NASDAQ, we are seeing increase in market breadth and participation of stocks. All right, so that's a, a good sign. Then let's take a quick look at the sectors and groups. All right, so for last week, um, all this data is taken from IBD, right? So um, IBD stands for Investors Business Daily, right? So if you can take a look over here, these are the top 20 um, industries for last week, right? So leading the way, we have computer hardware and peripherals. So you can see that the year-to-date uh, percentage change is 84.5%, right? So I won't go through all of them, but you can see that generally, it's um, related to computer. So um, the, co the computer um, sector has been performing relatively well against the other um, industries, right? And then over here, we have the different sectors, right? So you can see that for last week, um, almost all of the sectors are in the green, except for energy, right? And then if we move on to the percentage change year to date, um, you can see that this is a very um, good sign that um, the market is starting to move up into a proper bull market, right? So I know um, a lot of people don't want to say the word bull market because right now, um, a lot of news out there is still very negative. So um, a lot of people do not believe in the price action of the stock market. But if you take a look at the data and the facts, the data and the facts support that right now, we are in a bull market. And then you can see over here the sectors, right? So traditionally, uh, defensive sectors include like your consumer staples, your healthcare, your utilities, um, and your energy, right? And also another thing to take note is for last year, which sectors were the best performing one? The best performing sectors last year were energy, your utilities, your healthcare, your consumer staples, right? They, they, they perform relatively better against other sectors, right? So these sectors are traditionally known as like the defensive sectors. So when you see these sectors performing better, it means that the market and the market participants are a bit more defensive. So they're moving their cash into these defensive sectors, right? But not right now, you can see that these defensive sectors are underperforming the other sectors, right? So these other sectors tend to be more uh, growth-oriented um, sectors. And then when these sectors are performing better, it indicates that like 
um, market participants are more confident of the um, rally and then of and also of the future right so some examples of this growth oriented um, sectors include your consumer discretionary so you can see that percentage change year to date is 28 percent and um, over here your technology you have 39 percent and your communication 34 percent right so you can see that uh, there's a marked change in terms of the sectors from this year to last year right so last year the defensive sectors were performing better but right now as of this um uh, as of june or halfway point the growth oriented sectors are performing better right so what does this tell us what does this tell us it tells us that the market is moving towards a proper bull market right and if we take a look at the price action the price action also confirms it right so how do we how do we know that the market is in a bull market right so there's one definition is that market is 20 percent off its lows right so if you take a look here let's grab the um price tool so the low over here was uh, on this day on uh, 13 october right so if you see where we are currently at right now you can see that the market is up 27 percent right so a bull market um the definition of a bull market is when prices make um a 20 percent or more move um from the bottom right so as you can see right now we are 27 percent so um technically um, in terms of the definition we are in a bull market and then if you take a look at the key moving average or um, key moving averages um, over here we have the red line or the orange line orange line is the 10 um, moving average then the green one is the 21 uh, exponential moving average then we have the 50 and the 200 so you can see that all the moving averages are sloping up and prices are above all the key moving average so this tells us that prices are also in a uptrend Right, so it's not just for the S&P 500. We, if we take a look at the Dow Jones, the Dow Jones is also above all the key moving averages and all the key moving average are, are at least um, horizontal or sloping upwards. So there's uh, another sign to take a look at. And for the NASDAQ over here, um, similarly, it's also above all the key moving averages and all the key moving averages are sloping up. Right, so overall, we are in a uptrend and in a and I'll, I'll dare to say that we are in a bull market right now right so another thing is if you take a look um even though we are in a bull market and in an uptrend right now we are slightly uh, uh extended right so if you can see over here let's grab our price too um the s p 500 is about 1.5 percent above its um 10 day moving average so that's a bit extended and we compare it to the 50 day moving average um, prices are five percent away from the 50 day moving average so in the short term we are slightly um, overextended for the s p 500 um, not so much for the dow jones so you can see that the dow jones is still um, relatively closer to the, the moving average so if you take a look at um over here yeah so over here um the dow jones is one percent above its 10 day moving average and um two percent away from its um 50 day moving average so it's relatively um still okay um the nasdaq is also slightly overextended right so if you take a look um from the 10 day moving average to its closing price it's about two percent and then to its um, 50 day moving average is around 10 percent so um uh, short term the market is a bit overextended so in the coming week we can um expect um pullbacks right but um if the rally is to um continue we should see that the market should red um should pull back and decline on lower volume and it also should be supported at the key moving average or key support areas right so um it either supports at the 10 day moving average the 21 day um 21 uh, exponential average or the 50 day moving average for the um, moving averages and then over here we can see that this is also an area of um, interest so it can be a support and resistance right so previously it was a resistance so now it will be a support right so if prices decline we want to see it decline towards these um, areas right so that's for the uh, price section of the indexes so I'll, I'll quickly go through um, some of my uh, watch list for this week Right, so for this week, um, um, one of the first stocks is um, TYGO, right? So you can see that um, actually the stock has been uh, moving nowhere for quite a period of time, but recently it started to pick up some activity, right? So over here, we had a huge red candle, so prices gap up, but it closed all the way back down over here. And then it found support at the 50-day moving average, and then it went up again on huge volume, right? So on this day, prices went up 83%. 
and um, on volume, right? So the volume is 1.654 million compared to the um, um, average, which is around 84,000, right? So there's a huge increase in volume and um, prices also move up quite substantially on that day, right? So it went up, it declined over here um, in an orderly fashion. And right now it's finding support at the 21 day moving average, right? So, and it tightens down and you can see that volume is, has also died down, right? So for me, I'm just waiting for um, a breakout of this level and then I might look to add, um, to buy um, this uh, stock, right? So the next one would be ETRN, right? Over here, you can see that prices actually get up quite a significant amount, right? So this was on news that um, the depth ceiling deal speeds up the Mountain Valley Pipeline deal. And then ETRN, the company, is the developer of the project, right? So um, prices gap up on this news. And then it gap up, it managed to find support at a 10 day moving average and it has quietened down over here. So you can see volume has also quietened down, right? So I'll, I'll be looking to um, the area of interest for me is this area. So if prices uh, break out, I'll look to uh, potentially buy the, the stock. The next one is TWLO, right? So you can see over here prices uh, went up, uh, made a strong move. It break above all its moving averages. So you can see that the moving averages here were sloping down, but prices managed to break through all these moving averages on um, relatively strong volume over here. So you can see that volume on up, on the up, they start to pick up over here and over here, right? So it went up and then now it's um, kind of finding support at a 10 day moving average. So here it broke below. So this broke below, um, even though prices broke below the 10 day moving average, it quickly went back above, right? So we could expect this to be a potential shakeout. So right now it's quieting over here. So um, the area of interest for me is this level of around $69. So the next one is uh, MDB, right? So you can see MDB actually formed quite a um, huge base over here. So um, the base actually started um, around this area. So like, let's say around um, August of um, 2022, right? So this is almost a one year base. And can see that over here, prices gap up on quite a huge amount of volume, right? So nine times the average. And then now it's just moving sideways and volume has start to die down, right? So um, I don't see prices um, um, continue to tighten. And then this is the, um, this price level of around 288 is a price level that I'm taking a look at. The next one is um, MRVL. Right, so over here, um, we see that actually prices gap up and break above its breakout level, right? So this was on earnings. So you can see that volume was actually around um, roughly eight to nine times the average. And then it um, went up, it start to um, decline and pull back to the 10 day moving average and start to tighten up, right? So this is a, this price level of around $62 is an area of interest for me. Then we have, um, PCOR, right? So similarly, this is forming a base, right? As you can notice, like a lot of the stocks, um, they previously were in a downtrend, right? Then now they are basing over here, right? So this is stage one, right? So if you guys follow um, Stan Weinstein, you know that, okay, the different stages of a market cycle of a, or a stock cycle. So we have first, we have like over here, you can see that this was stage one. Then we have like a bit of stage two, then stage three then stage four over here, then right now we are in a stage one period. So if prices can clear above this price level of around $68, then this is a potential area to um, enter into the stock. Um, then we have another stock over here. So it's CXAI, right? So over here you see um, there's not much activity in the stock as compared to recently. Then over here activity starts to pick up. And you can see that prices actually gap up on huge um, volume over here, right? So the volume was around 50 times the average. Then it starts to move sideways, but it still managed to find support at the key 50 day moving average over here and over here. And you can see that right now it starts to tighten up, right? So if you can tighten up a few more days, and then if you break out above this price level, it's a potential area to enter into the stock. Right, so um, this is NBTX. Uh, MBTX also over here, you can see that um, it, it was like a bit choppy moving sideways, then it declined. But actually, you, if you take a look here, it gap up above all the moving averages. So in one day, it from below the move, all the key moving average, it gap up above all the key moving averages. So it cleared a lot of 
um, resistance and supply overhead. So right now it's moving sideways. So you can see that there's not much profit taking in the stock, even though the stock move up quite a significant amount, right? So if you take a look here, the stock actually move up by around 230%. But then after you move up, not much profit taking. And now it starts to tighten up, right? So this um, area of around $5.40 is a potential area to enter the stock. Right, so for the last one, um, LFCR. So similarly, over here, we had a huge, decli uh, huge decline. Then prices actually slowly make its way above back order, moving averages. And then over here, in one, in one day, it break above the 200-day moving average on strong volume. So this, this tells us that there's a lot of buying demand over here to, make, to push prices above the key resistance level of the 200 day moving average so now it's moving sideways so for this stock um, um i'm a bit uh not too uh like liking of this stock right because right now you can see that actually prices are moving sideways but it's moving sideways for a bit too long right so this is definitely not the top um of my watch list or my buy alert so but i'm still just taking a look at the stock just in case that um it um, further sets up into what I want to look out for in the stock, then I might uh, potentially add in it. But right now, it's moving too long, um, for too long, sideways, right? So um, that's something that um, I'm I'm not really liking of this stock at the moment, right? So um, yeah, so this uh, this is a quick um, market update for this week, um, June twentieth to June twenty third, right? So I'll see you guys in the other videos to your financial success.